Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And before we get into this week's video, I want to share uh, some uh, additional video of something that went on around here this week that might give you uh, folks some amusement. We had a rather amazing storm come through here just a couple days ago. And uh, as you'll hear in the video, we had winds in the area up to 114 miles an hour. A lot of property damage on the island here, and it was really something. And I'll be back once the video is over. Okay. Antoinette, we're on Vine Street. This is one of the streets that saw a lot of trees topple over. Look at this one, just completely uprooted. National Grid is here. They're working to get the power restored, but really this entire portion of Gloucester is just beginning to clean up. Whipping winds in Gloucester as a powerful storm moved through. This video from the Anasquam Yacht Club, where they recorded gusts of up to 114 miles per hour. The branches were flying through the air. I couldn't even get out of my house. The quick moving system toppling trees onto wires. Strong winds blowing out windows, even sending this dock into a yard. This used to sit on the end and went up to the top of the hill. And I just picked it up and threw it up here. The entire event lasting no more than 10 minutes. But in the bay, boats took a beating, ripped from their moorings and tossed into the air. We've got at least 20 plus boats uh, that, that the harbor master confirmed have been either overturned or sunk. Gloucester's fire chief says the storm left 3,000 customers without power. DPW crews and National Grid working through the night. Between those two entities, they, they did excellent work. They cleared that stuff up way faster than I expected. This photo from inside a home shows a large branch that penetrated through a wall, showing just how fierce of a storm this was and how amazing it is that no one was seriously hurt. That hits a person, that's a problem. And, and we got really lucky that none of that happened. At last check, there were just a little more than 100 customers still without power. National Grid says they hope to have everybody restored by later this afternoon. Well, that was it. It was pretty exciting. Um, we were in the offices downtown when it was going on in my, uh, our houses. Uh, my wife called and said on her cell phone and said, we have no power. Um, there were trees down all over the place. It was quite a mess. It was a, it was a big mess. The storm didn't last long, but did an amazing amount of damage in a very short period of time. As you saw, a lot of boats near our house at the Anasquam Yacht Club were overturned. Um, docks were hurled around like, like matchbooks. It was quite something. So that was, that was it, a little something in the middle of the summer here. Ah, but we go on, everything's fine, nobody was hurt, and uh, uh, everybody saw, had a bit of excitement to watch for a little while. Alrighty, and uh, now let's get on. Uh, one of the things I wanted to do this week also was uh, mention that we've updated the uh, Catawiki page. Um, it's over here, it's linked off the newsletter page, and what we did was we reformatted it because we didn't like the way it was displaying, um, and we wanted to uh, uh, give it sort of its own look. So this is what we've done, and if you, if you click the link on the newsletter page or anywhere, this is just the Chinese area. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff on there right now. There's more coming. Um, I've been talking with uh, Catawiki, and I may be helping them curate a sale um, coming up uh, sometime in the, in the next month or so. Um, we, we're, they asked me if I'd be interested, and I said, sure, it'd be fun. So we're going to be doing that. And uh, as, as we did last week, and a number of people, again, liked it, we, we poked, uh, poked at a couple of our fakes that are on the site that are on eBay right now that are doing particularly uh, well or getting some attention. One of them is this. It's one of these uh, uh, you know, flower ball uh, uh, scrifatio ground uh, pieces. It's being sold by, uh, no surprise, a seller named Blue Mirage. And if you know who he is, you know that he sells mostly copies. He doesn't sell much anymore. For a while, he was selling a lot of stuff. And uh, folks have caught on, and uh, I expect you know he, he may be changing his username pretty soon or something. But at any rate, um, you you want to stay away from that. And then over here is this jar. It's listed as being from 1900 to 1940. So they're, they're trying to get it under that old Republican uh, declaration. It's not. It's a brand new jar. Um, it's got a bid, um, and it it closes in a couple days. If you have it on your watch list, take it off your watch list. You don't want that thing. And then this brush pot. Brush pots are very problematic uh, because they're making so many of them now. They're turning them out. They can uh, laser cut these. They have machines that cut them. Um, this is not an old pot. 
uh, with the inscription on it. It's, it's a fairly modern example. And uh, it's got 10 bids. It's up to $60, closes in four days. Um, uh, I do not believe it to be a Qing Dynasty example at all. And uh, this, this is up to $3,000, okay? Now, this is a, a copy of a piece of rueware. And I have to say, the guy did an amazing job photographing it, taking the photographs of it. He makes it look really good. Um, here's a picture of the side. There's a picture of the foot. Here's a picture of the bottom. It even has some sort of a old label on it. Inden Man Art and Company and all this and the stamp. Now, he's listing it as vintage. He's not making any claim that this is rueware or anything else. Um, but I can tell you it's not old. Um, vintage is exactly what it is, and it's up to $3,000, has seven bids, and uh, I think it, 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 there's some, something going on here. Um, the seller has 15 feedbacks located in California. Uh, be very careful um, if, of this piece. If you have, if, again, if you have it on your watch list, don't, do not bid on it. And then there's this. This is also another piece that uh, Blue Mirage has up right now. It's a, a Kang Shi style Femi Ver mallet vase. But if you, if you take a good look at the thing and look at the colors, look at the decoration, the work on it, it is clearly not uh, authentic. Uh, the drawing of the faces, the way they're outlined, the shading, all of it, the colors are too bright. And uh, here's a picture of the foot rim with a Kang Shi mark and a, and a, and a, and a, a rather unhappy looking foot. That is not what you want to see. Uh, this is a brand new piece. Um, he has it listed as uh, antique. It is not antique. And it's not Mukai either. It's Femi Ver, but uh, that doesn't matter. It's a fake. All right. It's got one bid. I think he's hoping somebody will throw another bid on top of it. We'll see. But uh, you don't want to buy that. Okay. And now let's uh, hop over here to eBay and see what happened last week. This was sort of a great little buy. It was a nine inch Kung Shi period bowl, had a couple of hairlines in it, but it was nicely decorated. And this is the kind of thing that if, you, if, if, if you're a collector and you, and you don't have 800 or $1,000 or $1,500 to, uh, to throw into a perfect bowl, this is, this is a, a perfectly good example, a nice shelf piece. There's nothing wrong with it. The crack, it has a crack, it had a couple of cracks in there, lines in it. That can, be ster that can be stabilized very easily with a couple of drops of crazy glue on the inside. They, you know, put it in a sunny window, let it get warm, put a couple of drops of crazy glue in it, it'll soak into the crack and it'll stop that line from ever spreading. And uh, this was a, a really nicely done bowl. And look what it went for, it went for almost nothing. It went for 71 bucks, it only had three bids, all right? But that's a nice little bowl. Nine inches in diameter makes it a pretty good size one for the period. So. Um, you know, just something to think about. It was in the newsletter. That's why we, we put it in, not because it was perfect, but we thought it would be a good good thing for somebody, you know, who's just a, a, you know, a regular collector looking to add something to their collection. And then there was this, this rather nice grisaille decorated European subject matter 18th century teapot. Um, these are, uh, were made uh, in sets. Uh, you see grisaille work was very popular and very often has European scenes on it. And uh, this went reasonably for $287. Uh, these, used to, these used to sell for five or 600 even more. Uh, so a couple of hundred bucks for that, $280 plus 15 in shipping to here from Colorado. It's pretty reasonable. Uh, no problem with that at all. All right, nice looking thing. And this was another good buy for the week. It's a, it's a hat stand. It's blue ground enamel with Buddha symbols on it and so forth. And it's a clearly a 19th century piece. It had been drilled. Uh, a lot of these hat stands were turned into lamps, especially in the 1920s, 30s, and so forth, uh, when there was sort of a lamp shortage in America. Um, decorators often uh, grabbed, as many of you know, pr pretty good Chinese pieces and drilled them out and made table lamps out of them. They often did these in pairs. Uh, but this was a nice one, uh, nicely enameled, other than the hole in the bottom. But, but it was a good example and very pretty. And uh, it went for just $166. And I, I think that was, I think that it, it, the price was sort of low. I think the, it was sort of an overreaction, maybe to the fact that it had been drilled. I don't know, uh, but but because perfect, the, this type of stand generally brings seven hundred to a thousand, six eight hundred somewhere in there. Uh, nice looking thing. And then on to these, this very pretty little pair of cups, 18th century uh, Chinese cups with brown dressing on the rims. Uh, these were well done. They had a couple of little nicks on the brown dressing. And when this brown dressing gets nicked, it, look, it seems much more, they, the chips tend to look often bigger than they really are. 
uh, because because it goes into the brown, and uh, it's a very easy repair, very easy restoration if you want to not do it. Nice little pair of cups, good handles on them. There they are, and uh, this is a perfectly reasonable buy. Forty-four dollars for a good pair of mid-eighteenth century cups. Um, nicely done. Okay, and then on to this, the big platter. This was a, a nice. Uh, about 15-inch uh, 18th century uh, uh, Chinese export platter. So uh, this particular pattern was used on entire dinner services, you know, of 100, 120, 130 piece dinner services. This was a good under platter, under tray platter. Uh, probably had a tr meant to have a tureen or to hold uh, uh, meat or something. And uh, the decoration on it was really nicely done. This is beautiful decoration. If this, had, if you think of it this way, if, the, if this had been done on a, a Chinese domestic vase that wasn't exported, uh, the vase would sell for, you know, what, two thousand, three thousand bucks. Uh, but you put it on a big platter and call it export, and you can buy this kind of artwork for just two hundred and eighty-five dollars. Nicely done, and um, I still think Chinese export, um, especially from the 18th century, on big pieces. Are, are relative bargains these days if you like uh, good Chinese work uh, because many of these places that made this export material were top decorators and uh, they did export because it paid better than doing stuff uh, domestically. All right. And then on to this, the pair of uh, rose medallion bases, a nice looking pair, big pair, nice, uh, nice looking foot rims on them, uh, 1850 to 1860, 70, somewhere in there. Nice old pair of bases. And uh, they went pretty reasonably, a little over 350 bucks a piece, $699 for the pair. Now the shipping out of the UK to here was a little bit steep because there are uh, two vases. And uh, the guy managed to keep it to 121 bucks, which I think is pretty good because if you buy a vase from here in this size and you expect to get them to ship from uh, 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 Europe, um, they're going to be 70 or 80 dollars each to ship. So I, I think the, the the shipping on this was pretty reasonable, and I think don't think 699 dollars was an overpay for a good nice good pair of vases. All right, and then on to this. This was one of these uh, these Empress Dowager. They call them Empress Dowager pieces. The uh, uh, Emperor Sikshi. This was a pattern that she was uh, involved with the design of. Often comes in a yellow ground or a blue ground, uh, and this is the one obviously in the blue ground work. Uh, nicely done grape clusters. Here's a picture of the foot rim, uh, just the way you want it to look. Good looking decoration all the way around. There's the uh, oval seal mark that's commonly seen on these with the inscription. Um, here's the bottom, and this did very well. This did really well. It brought eight thousand and ninety-nine dollars. All right, because these don't turn up very often in this form, and this was a nice one. And the piece was decent size. It was seven inches in diameter, so it was a good size little tatsa, a, a nice piece. All right, and now on to this, the little the little opium box. I thought this was a nifty little thing. This was not extremely old. It was nineteenth century but had clear signs of wear and age. You know, sort of a genuine deal thing. Uh, there's a figure on it here. And as you can see by this, you can see how much wear it had. It was in somebody's pocket for a long time. That isn't, that isn't been rubbed down to look old. That is old. And uh, here's a picture of the uh, piece, of sort of a pactong exterior with a copper liner. Uh, nice looking little box. There's some uh, tin work or something on the inside. And uh, it only went for $56. All right, that was a nice buy. If you if you're into small table objects and opium boxes and and that sort of uh, uh, Chinese art, this was a good buy. Boxes are, are still a good buy relative to other things. Just like Chinese silver is a great buy relative to other things. And uh, then on to this, the Quan Jian where uh, uh, planter. This was nicely decorated all the way around. Uh, the guy did a good job photographing it, good calligraphy and all that. And uh, nice looking figure. I like the way the figure is sort of posed there with his hand up waving. And uh, it went for $680, which was right, right, right where it should have been. This was uh, done around 1900, maybe 15, uh, 1890, a little before, but nice looking piece. And then on to this. This was the uh, Hugh, that seller over in the Netherlands that periodically puts up bits. Uh, he's, he's apparently a collector. He has really, we're going to see some of the things. He had this very nice pair of, uh, he called them Nabashima style blue and white Arita pieces. This was a beautifully decorated plate. 
uh, whether you collect Chinese or Japanese, this was just a really, really pretty little plate with the, with the deer uh, angulated and all this nice shading here on the pine trees. Here's a picture of the back of it uh, with the seal mark and the three spur marks that are uh, these little marks. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, they, they put little pilings of clay underneath the bottoms of these dishes when they put them in the kiln because there was a tendency for them to sag a bit and stick. So they, they put these little clay pilings under here, like little stands, to hold the center of the plate up while it was firing and hardening up. And then when it's done, they just broke them off. That's all there is to it. And if you see these marks um, 99 times out of 100, it's always going to be a Japanese thing. All right, but this was a beautifully decorated plate. Spect spectacularly well done border. And uh, it did pretty well. It's Japanese. It brought $1,579. But it's a truly pretty plate. Really liked it. Really liked that. And then this, this was another one from him. This is one of these, uh, the Japanese wax resist uh, uh, decorated pieces. When you get these little waves at the bottom uh, down here, the way they do them with a goose on the shoreline. And again, uh, a couple of spur marks on the back. This was bought from uh, uh, Robert McPherson over in, when he was in London. He lives in the Netherlands now, but he's a long time, uh, very well regarded dealer in Europe. He gets great things. And uh, he has a nice uh, site online. If you, if you don't know RNG McPherson, go check it out. Uh, his prices are reasonable, and uh, he knows what he's doing. At any rate, this, was, this fellow obviously and wisely bought from him. This was a nice Japanese plate. And uh, this went a lot more reasonably. I think this was actually a very, very good buy, $189.23 for a good piece of late 17th century Japanese Arita. Uh, it's, a, it's a relative bargain these days. And then um, on to this. This was another piece that he had up with a brown dressing. Uh, this is a Chinese for the Japanese market, this Chen Chi wear. Uh, here's a picture of the back of it and so forth. Beautifully done uh, with the birds and uh, this nicely shaped rim. Uh, very good. And it went for $355, which is... Uh, Perfectly reasonable, actually, because, because some of these export pieces for the Japanese market have gotten kind of soft lately. The Tian Chi pieces, uh, I've noticed it with uh, ceramics and collectibles and these other, other sellers. Uh, they, they haven't been bringing uh, quite what they were a few years ago. So it's a good category to collect if you like Ming, you like late Ming things and transitional things. It's a good area to look at. And then on to, uh, let's see here. This, this was the, uh, the rose medallion uh, vase. This was a good looking uh, Cantonese uh, decorated celadon vase. Uh, nice, nice quality. The gilding on it seemed to be in very good condition. Usually the gilding on these is all worn away from being cleaned and things, or a lot of it is worn away. And uh, these have only slight bits of wear here and there, uh, but overall it was in quite good shape. This is a mid-19th century example, and it went for $566, all right, for the, for the single. Okay. And then on to this. This was the other thing that Hugh had up. This was my fav one of my favorite things of the week was this very nice transitional period, uh, a hot food pot with the uh, immortals in the bamboo forest. Uh, these, these types of uh, transitional pieces with these figures are very desirable for collectors. Um, the, the scenes tend to be very... Uh, 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 intimate uh, pictures with people uh, enjoying the sort of idyllic outdoor life in China, appreciating nature um, among the bamboo groves. And you have a young fellow here who's sort of being looked after and so forth. Here's a picture of the bottom. Um, a little crusty under there, which is fine, uh, but nice decoration. Good, good cobalt decoration all the way around. A beautiful example. And uh, a few years ago, a brush pot, I, I mentioned it last week, a brush pot we, we worked with a, a dealer on. Some of you might have seen it. it was from the same period, somewhat similar decoration. Went for 60000 65000 in an auction. And uh, we had several inquiries on this. And my view was at the time, if it goes for under 6000 it's a bargain. Um, and it ended up going a little over that. It went for 7275 Still a good buy uh, for this uh, rare type. All right, you don't see these very often, especially in that form. All right, and then on to the robe, this little dragon robe that was up. A lot of people like this. This is sort of an interesting thing. Uh, very nicely woven, uh, very good colors, good, strong, rich, deep colors. Uh, not a lot of wear, though there was a little bit here in the collar on the blue silk liner. They always have these, 90% of these robes have a light blue silk liner. And you can always look up here uh, for sweat and stains to see how much it had been worn. 
Um, there are the sleeves, okay? This is a late 19th, early 20th century robe, but beautifully done. Nice needlework. And it ended up selling for $4,550, which I think was right in there, right about in that sweet spot. All right. And uh, that was it for the week. And I want to take a look now at some of the things that are uh, coming up um, uh, in closing this weekend, Monday, and, and later the next week on eBay and Catawiki. Uh, let's see here. This is my little watch page. There we go. Uh, oh, that's the Catawiki page again. Uh, sorry. All right. Now let's hop over. All right. These are on Catawiki right now. There's a number of, there's a lot, they always seem to have a lot of good 18th century and, and late Ming stuff. This is a very nice pair of um, uh, Kangxi um, iron red uh, bottles that have been turned into ewers, which was a fairly common practice in Europe um, uh, in the 19th century. They would remount these with bronze mounts, and they did it in the Netherlands, they did it in England, they did it in France. Uh, but these were very pretty, uh, nice looking pair of bottle vases, and uh, they're up to, uh, close that thing, there we go, what are they up to? Oh, they just started. So they have no bids yet, and they close in about seven days. So uh, those will be on the site this weekend. And then this, this nice-looking pair of yellow ground Tung Shi Mark and Period dishes. These are really pretty. These are a nice-looking pair of dishes. Uh, very nice. They have the double happiness uh, marks on them, uh, yellow, uh, obviously, but beautifully painted butterflies. Nicely done. There's the back of them. Good-looking foot rim on it. Um, uh, nice enameling on the back all the way around. Nice shading, uh, really, really pretty. And they're doing pretty well. They're up to $1,456. They close on uh, Sunday. Uh, if, you, if you like uh, uh, Mark and Period dishes, you want to take a look at those. Those, are, those look fine to me. And then on to this, um, uh, Josh Chamberlain Juice, 1499. has got a sale up with uh, about 120 lots. Closes on Monday. There's quite a few good things in there, Japanese and Chinese. And included is this. It's, I like pith paintings, especially if they're well done. And here's a set of four of these. Uh, very good quality. Really good quality pith paintings. Uh, and one of the ways you can spot good pith paintings is by the, how well they, do the, they handle the shading. And on here you see this beautiful apricot colored shading on this flower. How the reds go from almost, almost maroon to very, very light red. And lots of shading details on the leaves. Very, very elegantly done. These are beautifully done. And if you like pith, there's a good blow up of it. If you like paintings on pith, you want to check those out. Uh, they're up to $300 right now, and I suspect they'll go for around 1000 or so, but uh, good looking. Nice looking, and, and framed and ready to go, which is always a good thing. And then back to the uh, conversation I had a minute ago about the uh, export platters uh, being superbly decorated and a good buy. This is another one. This is a 19-inch oval platter. This is a monster with a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a family crest on it made for the European, maybe for Sweden, judging by the cross. But at any rate, beautiful, high-end, fits you, uh, uh, painted uh, export plate made in the uh, 1780s or so. Uh, but no, look, check the. You always want to check the detail on these. It has an old gold lacquer repair on there. I couldn't care less. The decoration on the border of this thing is just outstanding, and all the beautiful shading down in here. Really fine work all the way around. There's the back of it, kind of grungy and dark looking, but that's how they look. And uh, there it is. That's a nice looking plate. It's it's up to 99 cents. It's got one bid. Um, uh, we'll put that in the newsletter. Uh, that's a, a if you like beautiful painting in a big plate to hang on a dining room wall. That is a heck of a thing. 19 inches is a monster. They didn't make them much bigger than that. So that's a good looking plate in its period. All right, and then on to this. This is a, a middleman brokers put these up. Uh, they're located in Fort Lauderdale. Nice looking pair of um, conjoined uh, uh, vases. Uh, there they are. These are triple conjoined uh, robin's egg blue with gilt uh, double gourd vases. Uh, late 19th century. Very attractive. Nice, look, nice looking pair. And uh, these are good old ones. Okay. And they're up to $54. They have nine days to go. Uh, expect them to do just fine um, in, the, in, in the upper, uh, you know, $700 to $1,000 range, I suspect. We'll check back. They'll be in the newsletter. Um, but, uh, you know, if you can buy those, those are nice. And uh, uh, Josh Chamberlain also has this up, a nice big Kangxi charger, uh, beautifully done. Has a little tiny little bit of wear in it, but overall in pretty good shape. Uh, it's got some beauties in the windows there, men on the horses. Love the horses. Look at that. 
the aubergine horse especially. Great face. He looks a little angry. <laughs> anyway, rate, that's up to $1,645. Still got a ways to go before that's over. And he also has this up. If you're a Japanese, if you like Japanese bronzes, this is a pretty cool one. Marked on the base, signed, and it's got this very cool uh, patterning around it. Uh, uh, probably Meiji period or so. But a good-looking thing, and I think there's a snail or something on the side of it. Yeah, there it is. It has this great little snail applied to it, and this piece has a nice old surface. It's, uh, maybe it's Edo period. It's not Meiji period, I don't think. I think it's older than that. It's up to $415. Good-looking thing. See how that does. And uh, then onto this. He also has this up. I just put this up because it's, it's, it looks like a Kung Shi one at, at a glance, and I, it's got some good age to it. Uh, but, it's, uh, it, but it's unusual because it's 20 inches tall. This form of vase typically is not that tall. That, this, this squared form, these are usually in the 10 to 14 inch range. This one is 20 inches tall. It's a monster. Nicely done. He has a, Josh has it listed as a 19th century. Um, and uh, it may be a little older than that from what I'm looking at. At any rate, nice thing. And uh, then there's this. Now, this I'm pointing this out because it's going to be in the newsletter, but the seller has it up as an 18th century Beijing enamel. It is not 18th century. If you're looking at it, it is not 18th century. It is late 19th century. And you notice the pattern on it looks a lot like Rose Medallion for a reason, okay? But this drawing, the way the faces are done, they almost look like uh, 1950s cartoons. This is a, a later 19th century uh, example. But well done, well enameled. There's some chipping to the enamels apparently, but it's a big pot. It's 18 inches or so. How tall is this thing? Hold on. Uh, 16 inches tall. Good size. It's, up, it's got one bid of $9.99. It closes in 9 or 10 days. Uh, but bid on it as a 19th century, mid to late 19th century piece if you like it, not as an 18th century piece. I don't think he's being duplicitous on it. I don't think he probably knows. And uh, then you have this, this very pretty uh, Yongchen period uh, teapot and stand. Uh, beautiful colors on, you know, f with Femi Noir uh, groundwork, and, uh, but beautiful colors, nice shading. Uh, this is a, a good, good decoration. Here's the side shot of it. A few nicks here and there, but nice one. And as you can see, it's a, on a, based on a lotus, has a lotus form bottom. And it's up to $110, closes on Sunday. Right now, that seems awfully cheap for that. Um, so check that out. And then this, this was one of my favorite little things last week that I came across. It was in the newsletter. It'll be in there again this week. It, it was listed, I think, last Friday or something. But anyway, this is a, a, a dandy little piece of Celadon crackleware that they gave a European uh, mounts to with this Vitruvian scroll work running around it, this, the way this is looped. Uh, but nice looking thing. There's the mouth on it, some brown, old brown dressing on there. Here it is, here it is, okay. Uh, it had a tiny little hole here, um, probably because it originally had a lid on it, I suspect, and uh, was uh, used to uh, as an inkwell. A lot of these were retrofitted as inkwells. There's the interior of it. There's another view of it. This is a good thing and a uh, nice little scholar's object. I'd, I'd be inclined to keep it in the mounts, but, you, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, if you could get it apart without wrecking it. Um, $546. Um, I think this has a little ways to go yet. Uh, probably closer to eight to twelve hundred would be the the price, I think. But we'll see. We'll see. But that's a nice, genuine looking object. And then, uh, lastly, is this though a little last bronze uh, Chinese, uh, uh, rather uh, Pak Tong box. Nice decoration on it with the with the uh, with blossoms. Uh, good looking script. Here's the back of it. Uh, nice bits of wear and so forth. The bit of ink is sort of blacked out inside, but uh, it looks like it's had good, legitimate use. There's a get an idea of the size, and if you like Chinese metalworks, and uh, 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 this is something you might want to look at. It's up to $123, and I expect it may double that by the end, based on what other boxes have sold for recently. We'll see, um, but it's a nice one, okay, and it's a good category to collect. All right, and that's it for the week. Okay, and thanks so much uh, for uh, coming by again. And uh, we're working on a couple of things. We'll have a couple of announcements next week. Um, one of the things we're doing is that we've gotten a hold of uh, a whole bunch of Metropolitan Museum uh, PDF files 
uh, for their for their annual reports and their reports on you know, over the years that they've done on their Asian art collection. And we're going to be uh, generating them up into catalogs and posting them over in the reference section because these are really well written and uh, well illustrated, many of them. And uh, I thought they'd be a great thing to add. So expect to see quite a few of them. I think I think we've got over 30 of them, maybe 40 of them. And we're going to get them generated as, we, as quickly as we can, but it takes a little time to convert them into books. All righty. And uh, there's something else going on that we're working with a fellow over in Europe on uh, regarding Chinese silver that I think will be interesting. All right. And that's about it. Thanks so much. Phone's ringing. See you next time. Bye-bye.